Welcome to the guided exercise covering the Performance Copilot. In this uh, guided exercise, we will install it, we will run it, we're going to graph some data, and we'll see what kind of statistics we can fetch with this wonderful tool. So let's start by installing, uh, sorry, let's start by running the preparation script. It's called lab perftools copilot start. You need to run it so that the virtual machines, your systems, will have all the necessary services and packages installed. So you should have uh, three success confirmations in a couple of seconds. We're going to start by logging to the server A. So let's do the SSH into server A. And uh, we're going to see the output of the command free. OK, there it is. Uh, so this is, the, this is the statistics of the system. Uh, and now we need to install Performance Copilot. So we're going to run yum install PCP and PCP system tools. That's the command. You run it. It's a good idea to pass dash y as an argument to eliminate the unnecessary confirmation. A couple seconds later, you will have all the necessary packages installed as indicated here. So this is the confirmation that the packages will install successfully. From now on, we need to activate uh, and enable PMCD daemon, so the PCP daemon itself. We run it the sudo systemctl enable dash dash now PMCD. Uh, we're going to have a confirmation that the symlink was created and the daemon was enabled and activated. So we can run just PCP, the command itself, and it will show us that the server is, is there, that it's uh, detected some CPUs, it detected some hard disks, uh, memory, uh, plus the time zone, services, and so on. Also, you can see that the PMC CD, that's a particular version, it has eight, eight, eight possible agents, which extend the functionality of the daemon. Now, we can run PCP free. When you do that, you will see the output of the free command uh, provided by the PCP framework. It looks like the old output of the free command, so uh, it may be a little bit confusing, but you have to get used to that. What's going to happen now is that we will run dd command, and we will create, basically, we're going uh, to write a file called discrete uh, by uh, piping the def zero, so the a stream of zeros, into a file with the uh, small block size of 512 bytes we're going to have 2 million of them, and we're going to specify all flag desync, which means we want to synchronize operations. Once this is running in the background, what you can observe, we can run PCP dstat. This is like one size fits all command that covers all sorts of statistics. But in this case, we're going to narrow it down to just the disk statistics of the VDA hard drive. So we want to see what's going on. And if you run it, while the DD command is running in the background, you will see that we have pretty much stable write activity on the device. So that indicates that something is right into the hard disk. So this is uh, similar to IOSTAT. Now we're going to kill the process. We're going to kill the DD uh, daemon so it gets stopped. And now we're going to utilize, we're going to make, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to put some tasks in our CPU. So we're going to write this, we're going to execute this little uh, for loop. For i in sequence 1, 4, do SHA1 sum def 0 background. So we're going to have four tasks running in the background, each one of them occupying CPU. Now, if you run PM start now, if you run it, you will see that we spend 95% into user mode, which means that the system is busy, busy. Uh, if we run the pkill show and sum, we're going to kill this. And if you were to run the PM start again, you will see that the user uh, column will go back down to zero, pretty much because this system is not doing anything else. So we run pkill show and sum, we kill the the show on processes. And now let's have a look at some uh, PM val statistics. So we're on PM info, grab free. Now that will show you a huge list of, of metrics that have word free in them. Actually, we are interested in the first one, which is mem.freemem. Now, once we have that, let's have a look at what kind of information it provides. So we run PM info minus dash dt mem free mem. And it says free system memory metric from proc mem info. Um, and it's a 64-bit unsigned integer, and the values are kilobytes. Now we can uh, run this uh, the PM val again. This time, this time specifying what interval and how many samples do we want to collect from that particular matrix. PM val dash t15. That's 50 seconds intervals minus s5. It means I want five of them being run in a sequence, and I'm interested in this mem dot freemem matrix. And as a result, you're gonna have a nice header that says. Again, explains what kind of information we're dealing with. And here, it's going to present you the amount of memory that's free 
as reported by the PROC MAM-INFO file. Uh, you can interrupt it and uh, you can interrupt the execution before it runs five times. It's going to take some long time, so you can, you, can easily, you can easily pause it. So now we need to install the PCP GUI package, which contains PMChart, and we're going to do this on the workstation system. So let's become root for a second. And if necessary, we're going to run yum install PCP PCP GUI. My system already has it. You will have to install the package. Then we need to make sure that the daemon PC PMCD is uh, running. Systemctl dash dash uh, sorry enable dash dash now PMCD. With that in hand, we may now run PM chart and do some create some lo local charts for the workstation. So we press the meta key, type in PMC. That's going to filter out the icon list to just PACP charts. Open it up. And now this is a graphical PCP console. We're going to make the window a little bit bigger. And we'll create um, simple uh, statistics, simple chart con containing only the network connections. So we're going to create new chart. We're going to get to the network section, then interface, and out bytes and we're going to select our uh, network card in my case it's enp1 s0 select apply okay and what we have right now on the on, the, on here that's uh, the live data uh, uh, regarding our, our network in, uh, activity so now we're going to simulate actually we will, ex we will we will create some network activity you can right click on the title bar of the window and specify always on top so now we can type something below, and the window with the statistics will stay on top. So a very simple test would be ping server A. And observe the bottom right corner of the statistics. Immediately after we're going to start the, the pinging process, as you can see, there is a stable network traffic. Pretty much stable. <laughs> we're going let, to let it run for a couple of uh, seconds. And you're going to see that the moment I will press Control C to stop the pings, the network activity chart has gone completely dark. Let's move on to the next step. The next thing to discuss is how do you work with the uh, data collected remotely. Uh, in this example, we will use WGET tool on the server system, on the student at server. We will fetch this targz file. So please fetch it. Once it's, on, once it's downloaded, we need to unpack the contents. We need to run tar xvf sampleserver.tgz. And that will create a directory called sample server log and two files in it, the data file and the meta file. So now we can uh, see what kind of values were gathered by, uh, within the archive. And again, we're interested in mem free mem. So the, the, the invocation is actually simple. We run pmval a and then specify the file name. This is our .zero file, the data file, and we specify the, uh, the, the metrics we're interested in. And if you will see of the output, this is, this is slightly unusual, because we have some time frame. There's a time frame when we had no values available. So no statistics was, were, were collected for that particular uh, system. And then automatically at 12.25, some data was collected. So let's scroll through that thing. It's a quite long output. And now we can do something like that. Let's say we are interested in a particular value. We would like to find out when it happened. Uh, we know there is a moment when we had a certain amount of free memory. Uh, so what we can do is basically you can pipe the output of the, of the command, so pmval-a file name. Uh, you can uh, grab for a particular value. We are searching for 80,276. So if we do that, we're going to find out that this value was present in the log exactly at 12, 29, 42 seconds. Um, uh, so you, you, you can find your data that way. Another thing we're supposed to do is to fetch the highest value of the discrete statistics for, the, our, for our server. So there is a whole bunch of different disk-related or read-related statistics. Uh, but the one we're looking for is called disk dev read. Now, if we, if we run the PMVAL against it and we're going to search for the, for the values, um, it's kind of difficult to find out the highest of them because we have like hundreds of, the, of values co co collected. So we can use a little oak magic. So we can pipe it through tail and then oak it to, 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 through our oak, sorry, pipe it through oak and then sort the results. 
And actually, you'll find out that the highest ever recorded value is 356. Uh, so, so we were able to find the, the, the moment when the system was most busy. Now, let's conclude this guided exercise by running a lab perf tools copilot finish tool. That will make sure that your system is cleaned up and ready for the uh, lab, which we have for you. It's a hands-on, practical, do-it-yourself lab, which will take some time. And I want you to do it yourself. I want you to try it yourself. And we're going to see each other in the next video.